welcome to Oral Pathology 360's first town hall. I'm Dr. Mandana Donahue and I'm the founder of Oral Pathology 360. Now, I know you might be wondering, why a town hall? Of course, the name is fairly descriptive when it comes in terms of towns and people discussing what their events and what the things about their towns are. But why us? Well, there are also organizations which have town halls. They are normally, well, large organizations so that everybody knows what is happening. And I think that now with over 10,000 of us in the community across the different platforms, I think we are fairly large. Maybe we are well beyond large. So yes, I think we can definitely have one. And the idea is to be able to tell you what is happening for you to ask me and to find out and give me suggestions because frankly this is not a regular organization this is not about me and the couple of people working with me this is about everybody so everybody needs to be involved everybody needs to be a part of this which is why the town hall it also ensures that we have a form of a deadline so that each time when we come up to meet you we have something planned and something new so we don't get too laid back and just going on with the weekly events. Uh, that just gets too easy uh, in terms of their full-time jobs. But yes, one gets to sometimes just get limited to going from week to week and organizing those. So just to keep us also answerable and, you know, uh, limited to a certain time. Now let's say what is going to be our agenda for today. So first of all is we will just talk a little bit about our priorities, about the progress we have made, about the challenges that exist both for Oral Pathology 360 and of course for the bigger picture and uh, how everyone can help. Uh, what is the latest thing that we are doing, the current thing that you need to be aware of. Then we will have the q and I have promised that I will answer any questions you ask about Oral Pathology 360 and I look forward to your questions and suggestions. And of course, then we will have our regular uh, what's coming up next week session. So what is the goal of Oral Pathology 360? It has always been promoting Oral Pathology. And while we started really as a response to the desperation or what you can say, the depression that was uh, somehow there in the August of 2020, thanks to the uh, COVID pandemic amongst our younger colleagues, it rapidly went on to become more. And we have evolved since then to include really not just oral pathology, but to be about the overall, uh, I would say, diagnostic sciences of dentistry. And we are trying to promote these by three things really right from the beginning. One is awareness, but amongst ourselves, amongst our colleagues, and of course, hopefully amongst the public. The other one is excellence, which we seek toward through the various educational programs, exchange of ideas, updates. And of course, uh, the last one is collaboration, is bringing about people uh, interacting with each other across areas and, uh, you know, across the various, uh, I would say, geographic and various limitations that exist. We all know that for a lot of parts, we have technology and we have funding uh, where the disease is not there. And we have all the disease load when those two things are not there. So really collaborations are very important to get everybody together and to be able to make the best use of resources. Oh, we have Dr. Nasser and Dr. Bowen with us already. Hi, thank you for joining. And so what have we achieved in this much time? Well, uh, I would say that a first achievement was really reaching that uh, around over 10,000 people in a combination of uh, the people who are uh, subscribed to YouTube, the people on uh, who are following us, who are following Oral Pathology 360 on LinkedIn, on Instagram and on Facebook where we have dedicated pages and of course our dedicated mailing list. So this has been a good reach. We have also conducted two international conferences in the last two years, had numerous uh, organizations, both uh, educational and professional, who have become part and who have supported these events. We had people from over around, I think, combined between last year and this year, we have had around 
uh, 50 countries who have attended the events. On a regular basis, around 35 countries, people from 35 countries watch the programs on YouTube. Um, many, of course, after they are already on uh, recorded, as they are replays actually, because uh, the time zone limitation is there for attending them live. And uh, then, so that is the achievements. And there's also an interesting uptick on, if you check, there is something called uh, uh, Google Trends, which tells you uh, what, uh, in terms of search terms, how often is a certain term searched? And it's, uh, the details are available from 2004. Now, if we look at the trend of search related to oral pathology, oral medicine, and oral radiology, uh, from 2020 onwards, there's a slight uptick. Now, I'm not saying it's monumental. It's a small uptick, but definitely there is an uptick. So there is some amount of increased uh, interest, which I think is thanks to the fact that uh, it, this this is not, I'm not saying this is an oral pathology 360 thing. This is a overall, this is the global achievement, mainly because I think we all got so much on the internet and we got so much into the digital world and uh, there's so much of things happening. So they will be found and they will be noticed and that has increased the amount of times that, uh, of course, the search terms have been used. Now, there's really not uh, that many ways that I can think of, of identifying how we can now quantify the achievements we make in terms of promoting uh, any of these sciences. So if anyone has an idea or a suggestion on that, that would be great to know. Then, right, next is our challenges. So what are the challenges that we face? Now, if you see this and let me try and uh, sorry let me try and make this full so that you can see it better and i also can see it better okay so if you see that's what i was talking about this is the global uh, this is of uh, actually challenges that face us globally and this is not just oral pathology 360 but this is a challenge that faces us as a whole and uh, So this is again from Google Trends, and you will see one very interesting thing. These are the three comparisons that I did. This is again from 2018 till now. The topmost in that is in that graph is oral medicine. <clears throat> the blue line is oral and maxillofacial pathology, and the yellow line is oral and maxillofacial radiology. Now, a few things you might notice if you look at this closely is one that oral medicine and oral and maxillofacial radio, uh, radiology are shown as medical specialities. On the other hand, oral and maxillofacial pathology is not shown as a discipline at all. It is only shown as a disease or a topic. So this is the first thing. And this, in fact, is an interesting thing that we share also with general pathology because while I did a similar search, for the medical subjects, uh, concurrent medical subjects, that was general medicine, general pathology, and uh, radiology. And I found that while general medicine and radiology again are shown as uh, medical specialities, pathology is again just a disease. Is the search term is only as a disease. So it's interesting, and maybe we should need we have to find a way of uh, uh, finding out how. Oh, we can get ourselves among the specialities and not just a, um, I mean, it's when we say oral and maxillofacial pathology, of course, we are not talking about uh, any one disease. We are talking about the discipline. So this is something that would be a challenge. It's a global challenge and we need to find ways of dealing with this. There is another interesting thing. Now, when we look at this, we see that, of course, some days back in one of the sessions that we had about the scope, of oral pathology, someone asked me, do I think that the scope of oral medicine is better? Mm -hmm. And uh, interestingly enough, okay. interestingly enough, now this is what I found. Um, I don't know what it says about the scope, but there are certainly there's better awareness about oral medicine, which uh, also another interesting thing, oral medicine among the three is the only one which is uh, Entered as oral medicine and not oral and maxillofacial, while uh, you know radiology or medicine, 
while oral and maxillofacial radiology is not found as oral radiology, it is oral and maxillofacial radiology. So, these are some observations I have not really uh, been able to, what I would say, think about them in depth uh, as yet. So, I would like everyone to give it some thought and see what uh, what any of it can mean and how we can use it really in uh, you know forwarding and taking forth our the idea of promoting these. Now when we look at this it's a very interesting thing like I was saying that oral medicine is way ahead and also to just tell you how these matrix are worked out is that uh, so they take the number of searches done and I have done worldwide you could do region but they take the number of searches done on a topic. The maximum number of times it has ever turned up in that point of time is considered as 100. And the comparison with that, so if it's searched on a certain day at 50, then that's what it is. It's half of what would be the maximum. So the maximum in a lot of ways depends on the number of times. If you're putting a comparison, so whichever is the highest will sort of determine the ratio of the others. So as you can see here, oral medicine is much higher and therefore it is showing oral pathology and oral radiology to be well below. If you look at these graphs by themselves, they are not uh, that bad, but well, it's, it's a comparison. Now there's, and this is, will demonstrate the comparison even better what I mean. Now here there is a change. The red line now is oral surgery. Sorry, I could not get them to be the same line, uh, color. So now you can make out the difference. The yellow line is oral medicine, the blue is oral and maxillofacial pathology and the lowermost one, the green is oral and maxillofacial radiology. So this I think clearly says where we stand when we, as a diagnostic sciences, uh, compare to the, what I would say, the treatment arm, <laughs> because I, I can't really say we are all non-clinical, so to the treatment arm, which is also very interesting in one way. Not to say I don't want oral surgery to be doing very well, but it's a very interesting point that I think oral surgery by far depends on oral medicine, oral pathology and oral radiology for whatever treatment they do in terms of we give them the information. So it's interesting that uh, they are so much better, that oral surgery brings in so much more interest than we do. Again, I'm not saying they should not bring the interest. I'm just saying we need to go up there. So, I mean, that, that's the general way. So, this is about the global challenges that are there, is that we definitely need to get ourselves better recognized. And what about the challenges we face at Oral Pathology 360? Well, Oral Pathology 360, while we have grown on terms of our community and how far we reach you, uh, we are still not where we should be in terms of being self-sufficient because while it is meant to be a non-profit, I do not believe it should ever be a philanthropic uh, setup where we try and get help from others in terms of those who are not, uh, you know, just basically a charitable help from anyone else because I think that would go against exactly what we are trying to achieve. Getting uh, philanthropic help is fine if we are trying to do something for patients, you know, maybe study something new and hopefully with time we will reach a point where we can fund studies, where we can fund uh, maybe even treatments, but we are definitely not there as yet. So at this moment, I would really think that we need to get uh, self-sufficient for a number of reasons because this should be possible to be passed on to a group of people who can then run it when I'm not there. So, uh, and I hope that that's where we will reach. Now to reach that we have, um, you know, started certain uh, things. So, so there are many ways that you can help us meet our challenges. Among those is, of course, contribute. And contribution can be in many ways. First and foremost, to find it, you can go to our website. If you go to oralpathology360.com uh, and on the side, you will see the contribute uh, panel uh, and tab. And if you click on that, you will find you will find a little explanation. You will find ways to contribute. These include basically the first would be if you can contribute some funds. 
Uh, it doesn't have to be a big amount. It can be a small amount. If you just do that, maybe on a weekly basis, not weekly, sorry, maybe monthly basis and or maybe once in a way, whatever is convenient to you and whatever amount is convenient to you, you can make a choice. There has been a minimum entered there, but that is a requirement. You can just make a change as to whatever you want and uh, you can now, uh, that would go a long way in helping us with uh, all the costs of the various platforms, the software, the hardware, the information sharing, the artwork, the website, everything. So that is the first way you can help. And the second one is of course, through sponsorship. If you are someone who can make decisions if, or if you have your own setup and you, can, you would like to in some way help and inform uh, our audience, then you can sponsor either a program, one single lecture, our newsletter, or any posts you can, uh, you can just uh, basically decide on what is possible. You can just email me at info at oralpathology360.com. It will come to me and we will get in touch and we can discuss what is possible for you. The next one is of course suggestions. Now every month, every week, every Tuesday, we have a live stream. Uh, once in a way we have a recorded session, but as a whole, this means that every single week we need to be able to find you a topic and a speaker. Uh, both of those things are essentially full-time jobs, but they are also very challenging. As you know, it is now two years since we've been doing this. So I would appreciate if you can think of any way to help, maybe identify a topic, maybe identify an expert who can speak and who you would like to hear, or maybe even, uh, you know, contribute to the website to the way things are run. If you have any of these ideas and you feel like being a volunteer, please let me know. Again, you can just send us an email and we will get back to you. And of course, this is not to say that you have not already been helping. There, there has been considerable help. There has been even financial help. There ha and beyond that, there has been so much support because the reason we have reached 10,000 community size is because of you all, because of your interaction, because of your sharing, because of your liking the content, commenting the content, and every week turning up here. And that is really something amazing. And I thank all of you all. So this is where everybody can help. Then there is, of course, uh, the other way everyone can help is by ensuring on a global basis, not just to Oral Pathology 360, is by using hashtags. If you want to you just put Put a hashtag oral pathology, oral medicine, oral radiology, oral diagnosis or uh, diagnostics. There are, these are all hashtags. You can put a hashtag if you want to help us and you want to help oral pathology 360 using the hashtag OP Tuesdays, which is our uh, trend and our trademark of our oral pathology Tuesdays or even oral pathology 360 joining us across the various uh, platforms and sharing and commenting on the content, whether ours or anyone else who's doing this work, it will all finally lead to the same thing. And that is the best way everybody can help. Right? I was also supposed to share with you on the latest, right? So what is the trend? What is the latest thing that I want to show you is about what another addition that you will find on the website is Oral Pathology 360 Academy. Again, if you go there and you click on it and uh, you will find different uh, things. Among those is training. So for the training, we have started Oral Pathology 360 Leadership Training. And this is basically going to be for two people who can join us who preferably are beyond the second year in their training, if they are in training, or if not, it's perfectly fine. This is going to be a social media leadership training, and it is going to be six months, and it will require definite activity from the person involved, and a certain amount of time, like two to three hours a week, and definitely an interest to learn this. This is important because, of course, now everything in a lot of ways is about social media and this really means that in a lot of ways and you might think so what's the big deal about you know sharing on the social media but the point is for a lot of reasons and for a lot of things 
it is essential not to just know, not to just share, but to know how to share and what to share. For example, the clinical photographs, which I have noticed that the various uh, platforms tend to block them out by saying sensitive uh, content. So we should know uh, where to draw the line, what to share and what not to share. So with all that, now all that will be included in the training that you will receive, anyone who joins will receive in this six months, which will start from Jan. This will close on the 30th of November. It is of course free and uh, there's a form. You just need to fill the form. The ones who are chosen or um, narrowed down will be, then we will contact them and have a interview to see that they are a good fit and they know what they're getting into. And uh, that's that. You know, I had said that I will answer anything on Oral Pathology 360. So if you have any queries, you can let me know. In the meanwhile, now let me have a look at what is happening here till you can get your questions. Yes, Dr. Bhuvan, very nice to have you. And thank you for the suggestion and, uh, and for the appreciation. Okay, then... Uh, Dr. Nasan, yes, oral medicine has very strong advocates. Hmm. We clearly need to learn a lesson from them. <laughs> Maybe we find out exactly what they're doing and how they're doing it, and we can certainly learn from that. Uh, right. Yes, Dr. Abdul Rahman, I am sorry that we lost twice and there. And anything else? Yes, good morning, Dr. Divya, and good morning, Dr. Elisa. Very nice to have you all here. And uh, yes, you will notice that we are a little light on our colleagues uh, and the number of our colleagues here. And uh, I meant to wish everybody in the beginning, and I forgot. Uh, today is the... Uh, state foundation day of seven of our states in india and two union territories if i am not mistaken india has a federal form of government which means all the states are uh, uh, have their own rule and their own government their own assembly uh, beyond the central route which is of course in delhi the government of india so seven of those states are celebrating today and in fact so is karnataka the home of uh, what everyone recognizes as the IT hub of India. And uh, I will also celebrate because I am in Karnataka. I will join the celebrations afterwards, after this session. And uh, right, I wish everybody um, definitely a joyous day. And uh, it's great to have these celebrations reminds all of us of a lot of things that we value. Another interesting bit of news is that I think next week, next weekend is the Indian Association's annual conference in a very beautiful place but um, sadly since I am still not traveling I will not be attending it hopefully next year yes Dr. Nasser more involvement from residents will help them and also bring them ideas that is true the younger generation <clears throat> will make a lot of difference and definitely will be able to bring us new ideas. That is partly also the reason why we are having that uh, leadership program because I wanted to bring in some hopefully younger generation who can uh, you know, give me more ideas and who can be more uh, actively involved. But yes, totally, totally agree with that. Okay, while everyone is giving their questions a thought, there is another thing I can uh, share. Is that... Uh, uh, basically, in the events section and um, on the website now is the best way because I just got asked a question some days back again about how to attend the sessions. So one of the best ways of knowing what is happening is on the website, again, go to the events and you will see an event calendar of what is coming up. And uh, now we are going to be having uh, our master classes, starting with one from Professor uh, David Klingman, and uh, he is going to really talk about how to, it's not just a learning of oral pathology, but also to how best to share oral pathology with non-oral pathologists. So, and um, that I think is very helpful. 
so these some of these are going to be actually not live streamed they will be because one is live stream does not necessarily bring in as much interaction as i would say like for something like that so we are going to have that as a master class it will be on the 8th of december so the master class is going to be on zoom and it will be uh, there will be a registration so we will keep it so that just around 50 will be able to register and attend so as soon as i share it please register for it it will be uh, there will be a charge which i hope to make these events uh, self-sustaining it will be a small charge if you have an interest please join and you can consider that also as a help to oral pathology 360 anyway it is just a way of keeping it going and also ensuring that those who because Zoom has a limited amount of, uh, you know, people who can attend or a limited amount of registrations. And uh, my previous experiences were that, that a whole lot of registered people registered and did not turn up. That kept people who were really interested out. And uh, it, it's just uh, very difficult. So just in a lot of ways trying to avoid those by having a registration for that. And uh, okay. Yes, Professor Nasa, that's a very good idea. If mentors can arrange resident participation, that would be excellent. Yes, that is a good idea. Thank you. Yes, including sharing clinical cases. Yes, that would be great. In fact, I, I would really appreciate that. Yes, and uh, we can definitely discuss this. And uh, I would like to hear more in detail what you are thinking about that and how we can go about it. Let me just go to our closing. I found this very interesting uh, statement, which, uh, which is from uh, George Bernard Shaw, which says, the single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. And I truly hope that today I'm under no illusion and that we have really communicated and I really look forward to truly hear from you all. Even if you're not comfortable putting it here, you can easily message me. You, you find me across a number of places. Although to be very truthful, don't be upset if you don't find me responding to say an Instagram message or a Facebook message or you know, uh, on the day it happens because uh, those messaging uh, services, I do not really check every day. So just give it time. And if it's urgent, please get to me by through my email, which of course is mandana at oralpathology360.com. Even if you use the info at or the editor at, it will all be sent to me. So don't worry. Uh, the people who check those more regularly and will forward me the relevant items um, on the right day. Coming to what we will have next week. So we can't keep saying that we are also including oral medicine and radiology without actually doing stuff for them, dedicated for them. So dedicated for oral medicine and diagnosis and radiology, we have a diagnosed TMJ problems easily. Uh, Dr. Ashwini is going to talk to us. She has considerable experience on doing work with TMJ. She's going to talk to us about the best ways and easy ways, not necessarily the most expensive uh, modalities or which are not always also available but the good old radiology and ultrasound x-ray and ultrasound and how to use those in diagnosis I hope you'll be there this is in the coming Tuesday and uh, that's that and thank you for being with us thank you for being a part of the meeting and uh, uh, some of you really thanks for turning up week after week I truly truly appreciate that I mean, uh, I know it's, it's hard to be there always, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, I guess we say bye and meet next week. Mm -hmm.